All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can probably see, uh, this is not your normal Q&A that I do on my channel. This is Q&A number eight, by the way. This is not a normal q and I'm, I'm on a road After trip. 700 meters, take the exit. This guy's been quiet for like an hour, and now he starts talking that I'm recording. I'm currently heading from Genoa up to Reims in France, and then onward to the UK tomorrow. Um, well, regular viewers will know that I uh, asked some questions last week, or I asked you to ask me some questions last week, and um, and so I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be going through those questions today. Last night I sat with my phone and I recorded all the questions that I could find with road, hashtag road trip question, and I'm going to play them on my phone because like, obviously I can't read them while I'm driving. So I'm going to play them on my phone so you're going to hear them as I recorded them. Yantraman, uh, you hear a lot about multi yacht refits. How often is a yacht completely refitted and how easy is this? Are fixtures and fittings installed so they can be easily changed in the future? And what would the what would a complete refit cost on your average boat yacht? <laughs> um, well, the refit depends on the owner. Some some yachts haven't been refit in ten years, um, and also when you talk about refit, that's, that's quite a broad term. A refit can be, um, you know, the interior, all of the carpets and and decorations and, uh, and the equipment, like the beds and, and uh, couches and all that kind of stuff, can be moved around because they're all fixed in place, right? You don't have anything, you don't have any couches just sat in a place because obviously in rough seas they can slide around, so they're all fixed in place. Um, depends on the owner uh, whether he wants to do the refit, whether he wants to invest money in in changing a lot of things. Also, more often that happens when, when someone buys the yacht. So if someone buys a super yacht, maybe it might even only be like, I'll give you a, I'll give an example, Nancy Walton Lorry. She bought Jubilee, it was only a year old when she bought it. And then it went into refit for 13 months. Now, I can pretty much guarantee that the reason why it was in for so long is because the interior of the boat was designed for an Arab, right? And they've got very, particular taste let's say and, um, and I'm sure for an American it didn't suit her tastes uh, so they probably changed an awful lot of the interior even though it was mostly brand new um, is it easy to change absolutely not um, it's not built in a way that it's eat like it's it's not like prefabricated and like put in place so it's easy to take out and then like put in like a like you go to Ikea and buy a new system or something it's not it's not easy at all that's why it's so expensive and also you remember that they're using the, the absolute best materials like marbles and the carpets and couches and every every aspect of that refit is the absolute pinnacle of whatever it is it may be lighting you know all that kind of stuff there's another type of refit which is an av refit an audio visual refit televisions, all the controls, Crestron systems, which is the system, Crestron is a system that automates an awful lot of stuff. So you walk into a room, pick up an iPad, you can close the curtains, turn on the lights, turn on your TV, uh, switch to music, the whole thing. That's all done through a system called Crestron. All of this stuff, that, so sometimes you'll have a refit, like a, a refit for carpets and decorations, and then you'll have a refit for AV or an IT refit. I mean, these these come around quite often because you know of the progression of how how fast that stuff uh, is um, is changing. So TVs, for instance, 4K, 8K. You know, every every three or four years, the television is getting uh, much much uh, higher quality. So, yeah. Um, and how much does your average your average refit cost for your average super yacht? There is no average super yacht. Every super yacht is bespoke. And, and I suppose it, it boils down to how much the owner wants to spend. He can spend, he could, if he wanted to, he can spend more on his yacht than he paid for his yacht. So, you know, and the, and the prices for refits are astronomical. And I think part of that is to do with the fact that the shipyard, once you're in the shipyard getting the refit done, you kind of 
hostage to that shipyard, right? And they can charge you whatever you want. Uh, I'll give you an example. I worked on a, on a yacht a few years ago and we had a massive refit. Let's say it's between 30 and 50 million uh, dollars. Uh, sorry, euros. And um, I, I wanted to have a new t top on. I, 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 I worked, my cabin also was a, a double as an office for me. And um, I had a desk in there and I asked to have a new desk top on. Not a new desk, just a new top. Uh, and I had I drew out some specs what I wanted, you know, with holes for cables for my computers and stuff like that. And when I and I, I don't normally see the cost of it. It got approved, but I, for, for some reason I was in a me meeting and they mentioned it, and it was eight thousand euros. They charged eight thousand euros to cut a piece of wood and fit it to the top of my desk. So you can imagine it was eight thousand euros for a piece of wood to be cut in the shape of my desk. You can imagine how much it costs for some Bang & Olufsen speakers or, uh, you know, Steiner speakers or something like that. Yeah. Okay, Yenze 1, question 1. Have you ever been propositioned by any lady, yacht owner or guest? <laughs> question 2. If answer to question 1 is a yes, did you get entrapped in a sex servant role? <laughs> question 3. Is there any yacht guest you wished she would have made a pass? Oof, hello. Um, okay, so did a did a, a, a owner or a guest ever make a pass at me? I uh, no. Um, the, to, let's let's be honest. I'm uh, I'm one of the oldest crew members on any boat right now, and uh, there are lots of young, fit guys who work on on uh, on yachts, and um, and uh, lots of very attractive uh, young women as well. So, uh, no, I would be last on the list for any propositions, I would imagine. Um, was there any guest that ever I wished made a pass? My, my missus is going to kill me, but... Um, well, I was, I had a, we had Selma Hayek on board, uh, one, one yacht I worked on. Um, and, and, you know, I like the Latinas. And um, also we had Demi Moore on once. Uh, even though she was older at the time, but if you've ever seen Disclosure, which is one of my all-time favourites, and I'm sporting a Michael Douglas uh, Disclosure hairstyle. I like to think of it as one, but <laughs> I know it's not. But, um, yeah, so uh, we'll, let, we'll move on anyway. Patriot1018, time for a haircut. <laughs> Perfect timing for that question. Yep, it's time for a haircut. I haven't had my hair cut since September, so yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it is for sure time for a haircut. I didn't want to go in Italy because, you know, the lockdown, COVID, I didn't really want to be inside with strangers getting my hair cut. So yeah, it is time for a haircut for sure, no arguments there. Uh, when in port and the owner is not on board, can a crew member invite someone on board for a tour? Um, not really. Uh, again, it depends on the boat. You might be able to bring them on and take them into the crew mess, you know. But generally, you certainly wouldn't be allowed to show them around the boat, no. Mike W, do most super yachts use one yard to be pulled out for maintenance? Do you, they just use one near where they are docked? It depends. Um, it depends where they are. It depends on the, the yachts the way the yacht is used. Like if the yacht is just in the med in the summer and then in the um, in the summer for Europe and then goes over to the Caribbean for the winter season, then yeah, there's no reason. They can go to whichever yard they, maybe they prefer. But if, if it's a yacht that's used, like one of the ones I worked on, we went all over the place. We went to, you know, Thailand, and Alaska and New Zealand, Australia. French Polynesia, we went everywhere. And in those situations, if it comes that you need to get some work done, or if it's something to do with the, you know, registry say, or the flag state saying your five year survey is, is up, and you're in Australia, you're not gonna sail all the way back to the Med to go to, uh, you know, La Ciota or, or somewhere like that. And whenever you get a good deal as well. 
Andrewski59. What features on a yacht and what attributes of an owner attract and retain the best crew members? Thanks for your excellent content. What attributes of an owner attract the best crew? Uh, I would say money. <laughs> it's a simple, that's a simple one. I hope it's pre pretty dark right now, isn't it? Okay. Wow. Oh yeah. So the the uh, the scenery is getting very nice. Uh, for sure, number one attribute is salary, because that's why we why we're doing what we do, right? Um, obviously, um, if a boat has a reputation for being a very bad place to work, then the salary is kind of irrelevant. Um, but uh, you know, because if you if if you know that you've got to do eight eight months on in one go, or or you you know that you have to be on board when the boss is there, and the boss is coming and going, you know, willy nilly, and um, it means that it's interrupting your time off and stuff like that. Then that's not a great scenario. It doesn't matter how much they pay you, if you've got, if that's what you've got to do, then it's not ideal. But yeah, I would say number one feature is this money. Like I told a story about Paul Allen, the late Paul Allen. He uh, he was asking why his crew, why he had a turnover of crew, and the captain said to him, "Well, it's because you're paying dollars, uh, and dollar the dollar fluctuates quite a lot, and um, and most crew in the industry get paid in euros." And he said, "Okay, well let's pay them in euros," and they and then he paid everybody the same amount. So let's say I was getting paid five thousand dollars. He just paid that, that person 5,000 euros. So everybody got like a 30, at the time, everybody got like a 30% pay rise overnight. And he, and he did it specifically to retain crew. Alex Kelly, good morning. If you could work on any luxury motor yacht in the world of your choice, uh, which one do you think you would go for and why? Uh, if I could work on any yacht, uh, funny how, going on from that last question. I did not put these in any order, by the way. And so it's, it's interesting that there's actually a connection between each question or not, or between some of the questions. Um, up until recently, and I would still be interested now, I always wanted to work on Octopus. And the reason why it doesn't really make any sense, but when I worked on cruise ships, the first super yacht I ever saw was Octopus up close and um, and uh i was in new orleans i was on a carnival cruise ship and it was in new orleans and there was uh octopus docked behind us and it just blew me away the size of it the fact that it belonged to one person and then and then i kept seeing it in different places i think it was new orleans first but i saw it in a number of places I kept bumping into the super yacht and i don't know why in my head i thought one day i'm going to work on that boat and um, and I almost did. I almost I got interviewed to work for here because they had three boats, didn't they, at the time? He had Octopus, Tatouche, and Meduse. And I got interviewed to work as a um, as a relief uh, guy for the three boats. So I would do um, you know I do a couple of months on each boat and then go on leave. And then I didn't get the job. Um, but uh, yeah, that was the boat that I, I would have said up until Paul Allen's death. Chris Clark. Road trip question. I used to drive to Italy from England in my truck a lot. Have you already chosen your route or will you make the choice when you need to? All right, so this is a, a chap who, who used to be a truck driver, he used to drive to Italy a lot. And he left a very long um, uh, message with uh, all these different routes that I could take, which was brilliant. Um, I, 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 did, I did already choose my route and I just chose the fastest route to be honest and um, it's probably the most expensive route as well. Actually it's, it's not the most expensive, as he says in, in his comments, is the, the most expensive route would be to travel down to the south of France and then go up because of the tolls. But I'm going up through the Mont Blanc tunnel which is the way I came and that's just purely because of speed because I need to get home like I said before as quickly as possible. Uh, Dion Pretorius as if someone dies on board while far from port from natural causes do you just bury them at sea? Uh, no you don't. So if the owner dies on board 
I mean, and this is just my guesswork here because I've never, it's not, I don't think it's a plan that we have. Um, if, if the owner died on board, then we would, um, we would, we would divert to the nearest port and we would call the officials of that port and um, offload the, the body, uh, you know, into a, a morgue and then they would do an auto, I would imagine they would do an autopsy to find out the cause of death. Um, uh, and then his body would be transferred to his family. You can't bury somebody at sea like that. It, it generally is done by the military if they're in a, you know, if they're, if they're at war and they can't afford to store that body because you'd have to have refrigerators to store a body. Um, so, yeah, you, you can't do that. Matt Robson. Do you find that there are certain yacht amenities and features that don't really get used? It seems like on larger boats, the design include a lot of redundant luxuries, sauna and hammam, for instance. Yeah, uh, that does happen. Yeah, it does happen. Uh, I think part of that might be because the owner of the yacht might not be the original owner and the original owner wants its, you know, like one owner might be really into sports, wants a big gym uh, and a hammam and, uh, and a swimming pool and a, and a jacuzzi and all that stuff. And then the next guy who buys it, he's not into any of that, so he doesn't use it. I worked on a boat where there was a jacuzzi in pretty much every room, in the room, not in the bathroom or anything. And it was like a round steel jacuzzi, uh, steel or chrome, like I don't know what it was made out of, probably steel, in every room. And every time the owner came on board, we, we put water in these jacuzzis and they had them out on the deck as well. And I, in, in, in the whole time I worked there, which was for more than three years, I never ever saw him use them or heard that he'd actually been using them. So yeah, there is plenty of space that doesn't get used. That happens a lot. Why do large yachts limit the number of guests if the boat isn't PYC compliant but do nothing to limit the number of crew. Example, two yachts of the same length have the same guest capacity, but one yacht has more crew members. Are the number of crew members regulated in any way? Uh, PYC that you mentioned in the question, passenger yacht code. So a, uh, a yacht, a, ple a yacht that, uh, a super yacht that's classed as a pleasure yacht, that's not a commercial yacht, uh, is, has a maximum capacity of 12 guests. So that, and the reason why that is, is that generally anything over 12 guests is classed as like a, a passenger ship, like a cruise ship or, uh, or an ocean liner or something. And the regulations are, you know, much higher. It's, it's like the difference between building a house and building a hotel. So you imagine the regulations that go into building a hotel, it's a kind of the same thing. Your, your yacht is for you and your family, whereas a, a cruise ship is for hundreds of people. But that starts at anything over 12 guests. Now, in recent times, they, they, they brought out something called the Passenger Yacht Code, which allows a, a yacht to have up to 36 guests, but they have to go by the Passenger Yacht Code as, as opposed to the Large Yacht Code. Uh, so there's more regulation, but not as much as a cruise ship, for instance. Uh, is the, re is the, um, the amount of crew regulated? I'm not sure, actually. I don't think so. The reason why one, one yacht might have more crew than the other is just purely the capacity. Because amazingly, even on a big yacht, there's always very limited space for the crew. The, the, owner, is, the owner will say, I want this and this and this and this and this and this and this, and make it happen. And then the people who design it and the, and the initial chief engineer and the captain and stuff will work out what space goes where and the architects and stuff like that. And they always try to cram in the crew in the smallest possible space to maximize the space for the owner. And as a result, they almost always don't have enough space for the crew. So they, they really have to limit uh, the amount of crew. Now, I've worked on many yachts where they've said, we don't have enough crew here. We need more crew really to operate the amount of tenders we have or whatever. And, and as a result, you, when you're docking and stuff, you'll see uh, stewardesses and stuff with fenders. And, and I sometimes, on the small boats I worked on, I had to help with the fenders, which I've never done before. 
uh, Orsons. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's always to do with uh, trying to squeeze in like sardines, as many crew into as small space as possible because the boss wants to have a sushi bar or uh, an extra gym or an extra beach club bar or what have you. Everything is going to be all right. Road trip question, how much longer? <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Uh, my arrival time ETA is 1746 and it's currently 1117. Cesar Yaramillo. Road trip question. Uh, this is a question that combines the passion points of your two channels. Ooh. During the 2022 GT3 reveal, Andreas Proninger says the inspiration for the launch color of the car came from his trip to the beach. He was in Sardinia on the 27th of uh, August. Okay and saw a 300-foot super yacht pass by with a striking blue-coloured hull. Which super yacht was this? Andreas Proninger, who's the uh, guy in charge of the GT division at Porsche, um, he said it, during the release of the new Porsche GT3... When I was on holiday, which is rarely, <laughs> I was lying at the beach in August 27 in Sardinia and this big, beautiful super yacht passed by, a 300 feet, very elegant uh, super yacht, and it had this gleaming blue hull. And the color of the yacht was so striking that he decided that he was going to use the same color on the launch of this new vehicle. Now, uh, the name of the yacht, and the, the, the boat is if you, if you know anything about yachts, you'll know that that is Madame Gu, the only vessel of that approximate size. Uh, it's a 99 meter, isn't it? So it's over 300 feet, but it's approximately that size. And that is definitely Madame Gu, the color. So yeah, so that's a good, that was a good question. Super Yacht Fan put out that Abramovich has commissioned a new yacht, Project Polaris at Lloyd Wirth. I'm not convinced yet because it seems to only have one helipad. <laughs> Polaris and Eclipse have two helipads. What do you think? Um, yeah, Abramovich has got a new boat. It's 146 ish meters. It's Project Solaris, not, Pol not Polaris. And yes, it is Abramovich's. It's an explorer yacht. It's a replacement for Luna. He built Luna based on Le Grand Bleu. I don't know why he decided to build a new one, but he, after he got rid of Le Grand Bleu, he wanted a replacement, so he built Luna. And originally he wanted to have the boat on the back like he did on Le Grand Bleu, but it, it turns out the uh, stability was wrong on, on it, so for having those two boats, so we didn't do that. And yeah, it's 100% it is Abramovich's. All right, guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end it here. What I'm gonna do though, is I'm going to do an overtime version over on my other channel, eTechman. I'll put a link below this one in the description so you can follow it. And um, on that channel, I can go longer and I don't have to worry so much about, about the analytics, uh, YouTube analytics so much. So if you want to, if you want to continue with the, uh, the Q&A, just go over to the uh, eTechman channel and we'll continue there. All right, guys, if you're not going to, but, but you watch this video, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.